supports Obama's negotiations with Iran, and he doesn't understand the threat. You know, it's ridiculous to think that they're a threat to our national security. Rand Paul is wrong and dangerous. Uh, an attack ad directed at Senator Rand Paul, funded by the group The Foundation for a Secure and Prosperous America. Welcome into Hour 2 of America's Forum for this Friday with Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth on our anchor desk from Newsmax, New York, our friend Ellis Hennigan, the TV and radio commentator who is with us for the entire hour, and via telephone from his district, in the great state of North Carolina, Congressman Walter B. Jones. Walter B., great to have you back here on America's Forum. Well, J.D., thank you very much. If it doesn't rain tonight, the NC State Wolfpack will play the UNC uh, Tar Heels in baseball. And knowing that you love the Wolfpack, I hope it doesn't rain so I can watch the game in your behalf. Well, you you root on that Wolfpack for me. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, College baseball aside, how this whole political game is being played. Rand Paul is a guy who doesn't believe in intervention. I believe you you share that uh, that distinction as well. Uh, tell me your reaction to the attack ads already running against Rand Paul. Well, JD, I don't know the names, but I'm going to assume, which is sometimes not the right thing to do. I'm going to assume that they're probably those neocons that got us into the Iraq war, which was an unnecessary war. Uh, so I'm thinking it's probably the neocons who are coming after Rand Paul. Uh, Rand Paul is my choice, and uh, he's not talked to me, and he doesn't know, know it, but if he wants me, I'll be out there pushing for him because I like his policy, not just on foreign policy, but how he thinks America should come back to be to its greatness. All right, so you're making news here this morning. Congressman Walter B. Jones endorsing Senator Rand Paul for the presidency. But I don't want to hurt him, but I, that's my feeling. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, C Congressman Ellis Hennigan in New York, I'm not going to endorse him for the same reason you're concerned. I don't want to hurt him with my endorsement. But let me ask you this. There has always well, been a debate, always been a debate inside the Republican Party, the interventionists and, and, and the isolationists. And I have the sense that the isolationists may be in retreat a little bit. Uh, Rand Paul is kind of backing away from some of these views. Some of the Tea Party people not quite as strong as they were maybe a year or two ago. Do you have concern that those who are skeptical of all this intervention are not getting the same welcome that they want in the Republican Party? Well, I think that Pat Buchanan has written several artic articles, and I'm a big fan of Pat Buchanan, too, by the way, mm -hmm. that say that the Republican Party is becoming the war party. Uh, and when you look at all this spending in Afghanistan, which is a total waste of the taxpayers' money, and I speak publicly about this on the floor of the House, but also back in my district, that we continue to support uh, intervention around the world and I don't think that is a good policy for the uh, uh, United States of America and a good policy for uh, our military. I think we've worn out our military. We're trying to police the world. It makes no sense, and that's just one reason, but not the only reason why I like uh, Senator Rand Paul. Congressman, MSNBC's Rachel Maddow slammed Senator Paul over another issue. Take a listen, and we want to get your reaction. Rand Paul right now is not even to like the first x-ray <laughs> part of this campaign yet. And the press and his rivals for the nomination have only just started to even give him a once over at this point. And so it's going to be really interesting to see how long does he get to keep getting credit for being a brave criminal justice reformer when he walks into the epicenter of a huge national discussion about race and criminal justice reform and he has absolutely nothing to say about it. Ooh, well, should he have I, spoken out? I, I think we can see right now that the liberals know if Hillary goes forward, as I've been told, and, and I'm sure y'all reported that supposedly she's making some type of announcement on Sunday. Right, we did. That I believe, and I've been saying this in my district for a year, Rand Paul came in for me back in September of 2014, and we had the most excitement. Over 300 people just were, were responding to every word that he said. And the excitement was just something very special. And I think that the liberals understand that, the, that a Rand Paul would be the type of person that would, could defeat Hillary Clinton. And I think the uh, liberals are trying to tear him down right now as much as they can.
so that's my thinking. That's not a direct answer to your your point, but it is an answer. And I've been saying this uh, for over a year, that Rand Paul brings to the debate a different look at the future of America. And he brings to the debate a view uh, that you are endorsing this morning. Congressman Walter B. Jones making news here on America's Forum. Tell you what, Walter B., hang on the phone. Ellis, you stay in New York. And wherever you're watching, you stay with us, too, as we continue our conversation after this. With Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth on the anchor desk from Newsmax, New York, Ellis Hinnikin, the radio and TV commentator, and via telephone, our friend Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, as we continue our conversation about national security, foreign policy, and Iran. Walter B., I'd like you to take a listen to what Senator John McCain had to say recently about our current President Obama likening the U.S. to the nation of Iran. Only an insane person would compare the United States of America with a country that is governed by the Ayatollahs who ha regularly hang people who, who uh, uh, oh well, uh, it's Let, a, a, a terrorist nation. Uh, that was John McCain on the Hugh Hewitt radio program. Uh, Walter B., your analysis of what Mr. McCain had to say. Well, I don't agree with the senator who I respect his service to our nation on these foreign interventions at all. But I will say that it's just kind of ironic. You know, I've been trying, along with other colleagues, to declassify the 28 pages from the 9-11 report. Uh, and it's kind of ironic that we are supporting Saudi Arabia, who in the last three or four weeks uh, to punish uh, people who live in Saudi Arabia, Arabia excuse me, uh, for crimes that cut their heads off. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I agree that, you know, Iran is a country that we cannot trust, and let me make that clear up front, but uh, there are a lot of countries in the Middle East I'm not sure we can trust that we say are our friends. So uh, uh, I just, you know, he has a right to his opinion, and I have a right to my opinion, and you and, and the other two hosts have a right. But uh, uh, the Middle East is, is total chaos. You know, I came out against the Iraq War uh, about two years after we went in, and I will believe to the day I die that if uh, Saddam had not died, we wouldn't have all these jihadists running around the world trying to kill innocent people. Uh, well, some country, some countries need dictators. Let's just be honest about it. <laughs> it is funny to be looking back on that as the good old days. But now let me ask you just a little bit to pick up on what you're saying, connecting to this, uh, this deal about the nuclear power of Iran. I mean, are we better off making a deal, even an imperfect deal like maybe this one is, instead of uh, inching toward war with Iran? That can't be a good idea, can it? Ellis, I agree with you. I think we ought to, if, if this should go forward, and there's a good chance that the Iranians don't want it to go forward, uh, for their own self-serving reasons, but if it should go forward, then I think that the, the president needs to allow the members of Congress to have the ability to scrutinize uh, the agreement, and that means the American people. Uh, but I'm like you. Um, if, if the uh, leadership of Iran decides that uh, they don't want to uh, an agreement, then I think your point, Ellis, just a moment ago about maybe inching toward war would become a reality. Congressman, before we let you go, let's talk briefly about a completely different subject, the trial of the Boston bomber. Now at stake, whether he will get the death penalty or not. Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz had this to say. We want to get your reaction. Sir Naif is going to spend the rest of his life in prison and will die in prison, not as the result of execution. Um, the, in order to get the death penalty, you have to convince 12 Massachusetts jurors, all 12 of them, if one holds out, there's no death penalty. There's life without possibility of parole. Congressman, your thoughts. Is justice being served if he spends life in prison? Well, I think the tragedy of the bombing in Massachusetts, I think that the the court uh, and the, the, the jurors will make the decision, and I don't want to give you a short answer, but it's really the way I look at it. They will have to decide what is in the best interest of the people who were killed and, and maimed, uh, and I will just have to leave that decision up to 
the, the jurors who will make that final decision whether it's death or life in prison. What do you anticipate is going to happen, though? I, you know, I have not been able to follow that uh, other than you and, and all the national news because uh, we've had so many other issues going on down here in the district. Well, mindful of that, as you are back home in the 3rd Congressional District of North Carolina, Walter, in, in the minute remaining, tell me what you're hearing from your constituents these days. Well, J.D., I tell you, the majority of them are, are pleased that I didn't vote for John Boehner to be Speaker of the House. Uh, there is a, a concern about the Iranian situation, but there's also a concern about uh, out-of-control out debt, which now is about $18.1 trillion. And it keeps going up. Uh, I guess that interest is compounded by the nanosecond. Absolutely. Uh, Walter Jones, we thank you for spending more than just a few seconds with us. And again, you made news this morning. You are all in for Rand Paul becoming the next president of the United States. You Amen. get the last word, 15 seconds, Walter. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I always appreciate your friendship, and I ask God to continue to bless America. Amen to that. Walter B. Jones voted the the most courtly member of Congress, if memory serves, in a poll by Washingtonian Magazine, where they rank me in another category oh. I won't get into. There's more ahead here as America's Forum continues from Newsmax TV.